Well, hello, today I'm going to talk to you about the DE10 Nano, which is a great uh, little FPG motherboard for the Mr. product. Now, you're going to get your board, your US power supply, a few USB cables, and if, like me, you're smart, you'll pick up a nice little copper heat seat sink from uh, a UK supplier, which you can just stick on your FPGA and keep it a little bit cooler because it will run quite hot without a heat sink. Now I've got a bare board here and um, I will later add a RAM card to it. So here it is out of the packaging. You've got GPIO ports, you've got your FPGA core itself, and then we've got a power adapter, HDMI, uh, a USB socket, your card slot for your SD card, a LAN port, and a couple more USB one of which I believe is the OTG for attaching your hub and we'll clarify that a bit later in the video. So here's the little hub that I've picked up and uh, that just simply plugs in, allows you to add keyboard, mice, controllers, etc. There is a board you can get that goes underneath and that will give you seven USB sockets. So yeah, I need to get um, a RAM card for this and an IO board, um, which will allow you to hook up VGA, but you know, that's not really necessary and you've got to check of course which GPIO socket to stick your RAM card in and then once you've done that uh, you can unlock everything in here. So here's the little copper heat heat sink which will just pop on the FPGA so you've got to get the Perspex cover off, uh, so four screws and that lifts away nice and easily. So there's your FPGA, there's your copper heat sink, get it glued down and you're pretty much good to go. As you can see, I've got my copper heat sink on. Um, it's maybe not perfectly applied, but it uh, should be good enough. You get an eight gig card with the board and that has Linux on it. Um, but I've also got myself a, a new SD card, which hopefully is gonna be compatible. So you just pop it in the slot, slot having imaged it and um, when you boot it up, we'll configure it and away you go. So time to get this uh, taken up and check in the wiki. If you align your board with the LAN socket over here, this plug is for the hub. I'm using a UK uh, supplied power supply unit because the one that comes with the box is American and not much use to me, I'm afraid. So here it is and it uses a two pin uh, figure of eight extension cord, which I happen to have, and it just then plugs in with the D-barrel and has plenty of power for the extra boards. And I've also just got a basic Amazon HDMI cable with plenty of lead and it's full size, so no mini to extra large adapters. Now I've also got this Wi-Fi keyboard, which does come with a transmitter, which is great. Now I was worried it wouldn't, so I I'm going to do most of my setup with a plugged in USB mouse and keyboard, but I can always use this with a Pi or other device if necessary. And I might chuck it on the Nano later on once I've finished configuring. So here we are with a bit of a jewelry rig setup. So you've got the LAN cable, the hub, the HDMI and power sockets, and of course the memory cards in. Let's power up and see what we get. And this is what you get with the basic card that comes with the device, Linux. But we want to be running Mister, which allows us to do 8 and 16-bit consoles and computers. And uh, we're going to need to reboot. But uh, I do actually have some trouble with the 400 gigabyte uh, SD card I bought. So as you can see, it all imaged and booted OK and was installing great. So everything seemed fantastic. But... Once I got to this screen is where I started having problems. So you can go into scripts and you can say, please update everything and it will go off and it will download for several minutes. Um, you know, I assumed it would take at least 90 minutes and it, it did seem to take that time, but on rebooting, it just wouldn't work. So I do actually swap out the memory card for 128 gig I happen to have kicking around, which was a, a better branded device and I've had no problems with it since. So just be aware, it's not so much it was a 400 gig card that was a problem. I think it was just, it was a cheapie that I got off Amazon and um, I'm just using it as 
um, a memory storage device on my laptop having reformatted it because it just would not behave with the mister and as you can see it's downloading all the cores and then on rebooting you can press f1 to change the background you then press um, another button to call up these menus where you can go in and do various configurations and what i'm actually going to do is run the cores that i can run on a bare board so that's going to be the game boy advance the PC Engine and the Genesis and I'm going to show you a couple of um, PC Engine demos and then a bit later on having fitted the RAM card I can show you for example Neo Geo so as you can see there's all these cores but the only ones that will actually run without any memory is the Game Boy Advance the Genesis and then when you scroll down the PC Engine or Turbo Duo as it's called uh, on here so here you go, this is one of the games that uh, I tried out fairly early on, and um, it's Aero Blasters, a great little shooter which the PC Engine is fairly renowned for. Now I apologise for the dodgy footage, I was shooting one-handed with a camera, and um, I'm also having to audio dub the video because for some reason I got lots of pops and crackles coming up on my phone which was not apparent in the actual audio. So Devil's Crush also is another great little game. It's a very realistic pinball simulator. And let me tell you, playing this one-handed is not easy. Um, but anyway, we launch the ball, uh, we bash the little scary demon face and very quickly lose our pinball and uh, the skull face laughs at our ineptitude. Um, it's a great little game and um, definitely worth checking out. And the PC Engine's excellent. So here we are as per today with my Neo Geo configured. So I'm going to show you a little homebrew hack, a demo of some full motion video using what's known as the Bad Apple demo. And this is available on various computers as far as I can tell, but the Neo Geo seems to have one of the better um, configured uh, setups where the actual quality of the pixel art is brilliant. The audio is also amazing. And um, yeah, it's just really, really cool. Um, demo and look at it it's fantastic silhouette anime and uh yeah i i really enjoy this it's a nice simple way of showing off the power of the the mr board now obviously once i can work out how to get proper footage out of this i could actually show you actual gameplay um, this is really just an unboxing first impressions video and i've got to say i'm pretty impressed now Analog are about to launch a PC Engine um, FPGA implementation, but I think you want to stick with one of these. So um, that's the RAM card. There's your your LAN and your setup. Uh, Apologise for all the dust. This is just, as I say, jury rig, mucking around to make sure everything works. I'm probably going to use the cable to go straight into my hub. And as you can see, I've got a little portable SSD drive to dump all the ROMs on and all the computer virtual hard drives and everything. And I'm looking forward to getting the Mini Mega Amiga, Amiga set up. So um, as you can see here, this is one of the latest cores to be released, uh, the CPS core. Um, I think it's been out a few months now and it seems to run really good. And it's amazing to see these high def video outputs from games that were designed to be like 300-ish pixels. So you're running at three to five, possibly as high as eight times the original resolution. Now I do need to get my mister plugged into a slightly better TV. I think there's quite a lot of screen tearing and lag um, from this particular TV. But um, yeah, I've been very impressed and it's very, very playable. And I'm really looking forward to playing some of my MVS game cartridges on the mister. Um, in the form of ROMs, because obviously you can't actually plug anything into this. So yeah, very impressed.